Hi, I'm Marna and I got a couple um, Baby Alive dolls and um, they came without clothing. So one of the first things I did was crochet them little outfits and with this one I made these cute little panties to match and from there I took that pattern and I made it into this will have fasteners and it's going to be a lined diaper and I'll show you that in just a second. I made this pattern. I saved birthday cards because they make great patterns for uh, cutting out. Anyway, I made this um, around the doll. As I held the doll, I crocheted to check size and all. And what this is going to be, let me put her legs down. It, um, it's going to have fasteners on each side. And that's going to be a little diaper for her. You be undo it and take it down, and there you go. You can clean her up. But I'm also adding this wash rag. It's just a small piece. Um, it is, I don't even know, I just freehanded it. It's going to be a six-ish by four and a half that I'm going to fold in thirds. Um, I'll pin that down and then I'm going to sew it to the inside of this diaper. I'm not worried about the extra weight because of these stretch. That's not a problem. So then I took the crochet item and I set it on this birthday card and I drew around it and I made the pattern. Because it is so easy to lose patterns, I keep notebooks with doll patterns in them. Well, any patterns. I have a full notebook of bike packing um, and camping items that I've made my own patterns from for years. So I drew around it and I wrote on what it is and what you need to complete it. I'm going to take this diaper and lay it out on graph paper with the little squares and uh, draw around it and then I'm going to take a picture of it and put it on my website so that you can take the graph and make this uh, pattern up. And then I took fabric and we're going to give this a go. I cut out two pieces of this fabric. Just a little cotton print. Then I cut out, that's the other half of that, I cut out this, um, oops, upside down. Uh, no, it's not. Yeah, it is. Um, this liner from a wash rag, washcloth. This is raincoat fabric. I use that on, um, I made my dog a raincoat. I used to, well, I still do actually, make, yeah, get this. I used to make uh, quite often um, goose and duck diapers. And I tried to come up with ways to make those so that they didn't have to put Kotex in them to keep throwing the Kotex away. So I came up with some ideas that I'm going to show you for um, Baby Alive coming up, but not in this video. This video is, is just about this. So what I will do is I will pin this together. I will make it more neat, of course, and straighten it up. Pin this together, then I'm gonna take bias tape and I'm gonna take it all the way around, and I'll show you that. I have seen uh, videos where people take a, a wash rag, washcloth, fold it like this in thirds. They add a piece of Velcro across here, soft side, and then they put this on Baby Alive and they put the hard side of the Velcro here. And that's all good and fine. But what about it getting wet and sloppy? I went to the dollar store and I bought always there's 20 in here and if you line your diaper with these you pull one out as i said i used to make duck and goose um indoor duck and goose um, diapers and i actually have a web a couple websites housegoose.com and ducksindiapers.com and if it can hold for a duck and a goose, I promise you, it, there's nothing that can come out of these dolls that will rival a duck or a goose. Anyway, if you made these up, as you've seen, and then take this liner and put it inside your 
diaper, you now have the waterproofing and a little ab more absorbency. Yes, it is, you know, throw away, and I don't really like that, but if you're gonna do it, do it on the small scale, not a great big baby diaper. And like I said, 20 of these for a dollar. Um, you could cut this in half. For the little shirt, you take a, a piece of fabric, any fabric, little cottony prints best, and cut a square, approximately eight by eight, folding twice. This was a pattern that I found my son will be 43 in October, and I started making these for him when I was pregnant, and what you used was a bandana, so I'm trying to scale that down now for these Baby Alive dolls. You took a bandana and you cut it and um, made that for a child, a baby. Okay, so you, you folded your fabric twice, cut your neck, small. You can always add, once it's too big, it's too big. That is your front. Your two arms will be separate. Your front and your back are together. Okay, and then you start, now you start at the arms or at the bottom, and you just cut it a little bit. I don't want to cut it too wide for the doll. And what you will have will look like this, kind of like this. Yours is probably going to look better than mine. And I bet I cut those arms too small. Let's try it. And then you cut the front. And what I did, actually what they did was they just put a little slit in it. I took it all the way down and because I always change patterns. And then I rounded out the front and made a little summer top. I can't tell you how many of these I made for my three sons. Um, they were just light and breezy and easy. I'm set up at my sewing table, and as you can see, I'm pinned. I did recut this eight by eight piece of fabric that I folded four times, and I cut the neck um, when you fold it, you're going to have a double fold and two single folds. And the double fold is the front of your shirt. The double folds, the two folds, are your arms. I measured two inches down to fit the doll's arm, and then I just kind of rounded that out. It does not have to be perfect. This will come out. I'll show you as I sew. Also, another change that I made, I had cut this so that both sides look the same. Well, that's fine for some of us, but not for all of us. So what I did is I put one layer of the fabric that I wanted to use, uh, right side out or pretty side out, a layer of waterproof fabric. This is from a raincoat I made for my dog. A layer of washcloth. And then I cut a piece of, I just took an off fall. It's six and a half by two. And what I went with by was how it fit in here. And I'm gonna show you real quick. Anyway, I took this out so that you wouldn't confuse front from back and accidentally put the diaper on backwards and not have your absorbent area. So what I'm gonna do is I just wanna show you real quick. Most of, oh, I'm not threaded. Most of you, if you're following this, know how to sew, but some won't. You can sew this by hand. That is not a problem at all. I'm going to use a sewing machine. Normally I do sew by hand when I'm doing stuff for beginner crafters, but I just wanna show you that I'm using the zigzag a big fat zigzag stitch and of course I'm backing it for the knot. When I get to the corner I just turn my fabric. You lift the foot, leave your needle in and start again. Now what I'm going to do off camera is go all the way around this 
and this, and then we'll come back and I'll show you the next step. As you can see, I always have help when I'm crafting. My loyal, loyal German Shepherd is laying under my table as I sew. And my Yorkie is right here too. Okay, so this is sewn in, and you can see the zigzag, how I put that in. I did get this off-centered a little bit. It's not a problem. You can pull that back around as you sew. And the only thing you're going to do is we're going to take bias tape. I like the wider um, bias tape, double fold, but you can use the thinner. I mean, it's it, it might be cuter because the dolls are smaller. I just, I like this. And what we're going to do is trim a little bit of this like right here where it sticks out i'm going to trim that so it's closer because once we start running this bias tape around and we're going to start the back is wider than the front and we're going to start in the middle of the back and we're just going to take this all the way around the diaper to finish your little diaper, um, you need two things. One, Velcro, about one inch on each side. So you need about two inches. That's probably a little less than an inch, but it'll do. And I like to pretty things up. I wish I had purple, but I don't. And you'll be able to see this better anyway. I'm going to put a little bow on the back of the diaper. And yes, you can wash that in the washing machine. One thing I wanted to add is I always wash these um, either on gentle and let them uh, hang to dry or lay flat to dry. To make a small bow, I say this all the time with Barbie, you make a big bow and pull it down and pull it down and then you have a little bow and then when your scissors are here, oh, there they are. You cut it off at an angle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sewing machine, and, and uh, this is the back. And I'm just going to sew that right there just for the fun of it. I think it'd be cute. Give it an extra pop. And then I'm going to sew. On each side and the front, I'm going to add these fasteners. I wish I had white. I don't. I'm out of white. And then the, the back side, or the hard side, I am going to let stick out a little bit so that it folds over and secures. Our diaper is done. Um, normally, I would use yellow um, and black thread so that it didn't show, but and probably a light purple here, but I wanted the stitches to show up on the camera so you could see it. Now we're gonna try this on her. And you have a reusable green washable baby alive diaper. Got a little tight or, or loose or tight over here so that I try to make it even. And that's how it looks. Isn't that bow cute? The next step with the crocheted diaper with the liner in it is to, well, what I'm going to, you can do anything you want. You could sew on uh, Velcro tabs like we did this one, or even smaller for this particular diaper. Um, you could even do a button because your yarn will stretch to accommodate it. It would have to be a small button, but it would be really cute, especially if you put one of those like, oh, I don't know, a flower or dump truck for a little boy. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these largest snaps. On the snaps, I was a little disappointed. I didn't have two of the large in the same color. It does not matter, but stuff like that kind of drives me crazy. You could have, if you wanted to, have used this type of button. I should take one off and show you. Um, make sure I don't have metal on there. And what you would do is push up through the seams, stretching that out, pull this all the way up. 
I'm, I'm, and I'm holding it tight down at the bottom because it will be sewed on the other side. And I want to show you how you would have to manipulate that. But you would stretch those fibers in the yarn and be able to do it easily the next few times. Now, how cute would that be on either side? And that's just something you can do. Just a button on each side. But we used the snap so I can show you. And it's also good for beginner crafters. Even if mom or grandma did the first part, if you're making this for your child's doll, let them sew the snaps on, teach them how. And there you go, you've got your little diaper that looks like little panties. You can make the matching. If this were in orange and yellow, that would be very cute. This is what your shirt will look like after you get it cut out and the front rounded off. And what we're gonna do is right sides together. The first thing we're going to do is simply stitch each armhole. I forgot something. Well, this is done differently and I haven't done this in a lot of years. You can either turn your arm sleeves over. I'm leaving this raw. For right now. One side is the selvage ed. When you make these with bandanas, it's the selvage end. So you don't have to do the um, turning over or you can also take your sleeves and run the bias tape down it. Okay, turn it inside correct. And what you're going to do is starting at the neck but not including the neck. Sew your bias tape. I suggest a zigzag uh, stitch all the way around to the other side of the neck, stopping and cutting your bias tape. Normally for this shirt, I would use a matching color, but because it is 2020, and uh, May of 2020, you can't find this in the stores for everybody making masks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this um, more narrow uh, bias tape and I'm going to zigzag stitch it about, I don't know, what do you think that is, seven inches out. And then I'm going to stop there and open it up and put the neck of the doll uh, shirt in it. I'm going to back my stitches up to knot that. I'm going to come around to the other side, knot it, and then I'm going to go out the same amount, about seven inches. I'm going to turn the edges under on each end like this so it doesn't fray. And then we will have a tie for the shirt when we're finished. Two things I want to mention. I do now have this pattern on the grid paper up on my website at dollsrescued.com where you can go get a piece of graph paper and make the pattern yourself. When you tie a bow on a doll, if you tie it upside down, your strings will hang down. That's why when we're children, and our mothers go to tie a bow around your neck, they put you in front of them so that it's upside down. We hope you enjoyed our video. We hope you'll use our patterns for your own use and not for selling. Please leave a like, subscribe, and let me know which was your favorite craft.